But we begin our report with a catastrophic end to a deep sea expedition. On behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the entire Unified Command, I offer my deepest condolences to the families. The Titan submersible went missing Sunday while on a journey to see remains of the Titanic. But on Thursday, it was remains of the Titan that were found deep in the Atlantic Ocean. The U.S. Coast Guard said it believes all five of the vessel's passengers are dead. Roxana Saberi is in Boston with Thursday's grim developments. A tragic end to a frantic search. This morning, an ROV or remote operated vehicle from the vessel Horizon Arctic discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible. The debris of the missing submersible Titan was found about 1,600 feet from the Titanic wreckage. This is a incredibly unforgiving uh, environment down there uh, on the seafloor, uh, and uh, the debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel. The cause of the implosion is still unknown, but all five people aboard were killed. OceanGate founder Stockton Rush, billionaire adventurer Hamish Harding, Pakistani businessman Shahzada Dawood and his 19-year-old son Suleiman, and French explorer Paul-Henri Narjolet. The Titan has been missing since Sunday, when it descended to the Titanic wreckage site about two and a half miles beneath the North Atlantic sparking a massive international search covering about 10,000 square miles. The company OceanGate Expeditions charges $250,000 to see the Titanic up close. Pierre Wimmer, an explorer himself, says he got to know the company's CEO, Stockton Rush, when he was considering a dive years ago. Stockton uh, obviously was a deep-sea explorer um, who it's what few people have done. But OceanGate has faced criticism from a group of experts in the submersible industry who wrote a letter to the company in 2018 warning of possible catastrophic problems. One of those experts, Will Cohen, said the Titan hadn't passed safety standards. There are only 10 vehicles in the whole world that can go 4,000 meters or deeper, and all of them are certified except the Titan. While Wimmer mourns for his friend, he believes this setback will not stop other people from deep water exploring. We've never been held back by defeats along the way. The quest will continue for exploration. And Roxana Saberi joins us now. Roxana, we're getting some news about the, from the Navy about the submersible. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, John, tonight a Navy official told CBS News that the Navy detected what it called an acoustic anomaly consistent with an implosion after the Titan lost contact on Sunday. The official says the information was shared with the Coast Guard, which used it to narrow down the search area. Now, today the Coast Guard said in a press conference that throughout its search it had listening devices in the water but did not detect any catastrophic failures and it said for 72 hours or about three days it had sonar, sonar buoys in the water that did not detect any catastrophic events. John. And so what's the next step now for the Coast Guard and its partners? I mean will they continue looking for answers or because of that unforgiving uh, nature of the wreckage site is if, do they just start to pack things up? Well, they have said that they're going to start demobilizing personnel over the next 24 hours. And they did say, as you just referred to, this is an incredibly difficult and dangerous environment to work in. But they are going to continue looking for answers. They say they're going to be analyzing the debris that was gathered at the search site. Uh, they said at least five main pieces of debris were found, including the nose cone mm -hmm. of the Titan submersible and two ends of the pressure hull. They want to find out if or when it's if they can, find the bodies of the five victims. They don't have any sign of that them yet, they say. And they say now that they found the debris, there will be an investigation into what happened, John. And what more have you learned about the victims and their loved ones? We've talked to a, a couple of friends of the victims and fellow explorers. One, his name was Matt Tullock, and he said it was a fellow explorer of Paul-Henri Nargelet, who was the former a uh, French naval diver uh, who had been to the Titanic several times, according to Matt, more than anybody he knew, possibly 40 times. 
he said when he got the news that there was an implosion, he was sort of assured that there wasn't suffering involved, although we're still not clear on the timeline of when the implosion happened. I, when I asked him how he thought his friend uh, Paul-Henri Nargelet would like to be remembered, he said, well, I don't know if he even would want to be remembered because he had such a small ego despite mm. all of his experience. Um, but he said he really enjoyed sharing the knowledge he had, and he'd probably like to be remembered as someone who had continued the story of the Titanic. John? CBS News correspondent Roxana Saberi, thank you.